this goal. The, the second topic that's increasingly coming under the microscope is whether or not carbon emissions from internal parts of the climate system, carbon emissions from ecosystems and from the oceans will increase or decrease in the future. This was a topic that was considered um, not as an afterthought, but as an uh, immature but important topic in the fourth assessment report. And what was concluded in the fourth assessment report is that feedbacks where climate change causes changes in ecosystems that cause them to release carbon could add anywhere from 500 billion to 100 billion tons to the amount of extra CO2 that we need to avoid emitting if we're to get a stabilization target in the future. The implication of these two things together is that we have higher emissions and we have a less friendly natural system to taking up these higher emissions and they both mean that looking forward the challenge of stabilizing atmospheric CO2 is getting more complicated than if we thought it was in the air before. The reason it's more complicated is that in order to hit any given stabilization target we're going to have to avoid emitting substantially more carbon dioxide than we thought we had to emit as of a couple of years ago. It's a tremendous problem and what it basically means is we have two choices. We can either start emissions reductions earlier or once we start emissions reductions we can make them more aggressive. But that's not to say what policy trajectory we ought to be on but it's important for the policy discussion to be informed by these new constraints. We, 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 we would hope that you would very very briefly introduce the, 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 um, the, the new material from, from the climate change report, um, especially on, it says here, sea level rise. Yeah. So what, what we know about sea level, about observations, we know that uh, from tide gauge, uh, sea level has been rising during the past century uh, by about 15 centimeters in terms of global mean. So now, since uh, the early 90s, we measure sea level rise using satellites, uh, which, is, uh, which has two advantages. The, the measurements are more precise. They are not contaminated by uh, ground motions, for example. And, and, and moreover, they, they provide global coverage of the ocean, which was not possible with tide gauge, which are, which are located along coastlines. So we have now a 16-year record from satellite altimetry. Uh, the first satellite uh, de dedicated to this, uh, to study the ocean is a Topax Poseidon <coughs> mission that I'm sure you have heard about. It's a US French, French uh, mission. Uh, its successor is Jason-1, Jason one, launched in 2001, and, and a new satellite has been launched a few months ago, Jason-2. Um, so we have now two satellites in orbit. What we see with this uh, new satellite measurement is that sea level is uh, continuing to rise at a rate which is about twice faster than uh, the past century rate. That is, the rate that we measure is uh, more than three millimeters per year. Uh, we, and, and, and moreover, what uh, we, we have discovered with satellite altimetry is that the rise is not uniform. Sea level is not rising uniformly. Uh, in some regions, the rate of rise is up to three times the global mean. So this means uh, nearly one centimeter per year in some region. And which region, you may ask? Uh, <laughs> The Western Pacific, uh, the Southern Ocean, the Austral Ocean, and, and some region in the North Atlantic, Southern of Greenland. We, we know the main cause of this regional variability in sea level trends. It's uh, related to thermal expansion of the ocean, one of the two causes of the sea level rise. Uh, and, and this is due to the fact that uh, ocean warming is not uniform. It is related to the, the way the ocean circulation is transporting heat uh, from the surface to, to the deep ocean and, and laterally. So uh, what can I add? Just two to, to, to things. Uh, we, we, we know the cause of the, of the present sea level rise. There are two causes. Uh, 
uh, one is thermal expansion of the ocean. I already talked about that. And the other cause is uh, the freshwater input uh, from uh, land, coming from land, uh, which cause an, an increase in mass of the ocean. Uh, and this freshwater input is related to melting of uh, mountain glaciers and, uh, and also related to the ice mass to ice mass loss uh, from Greenland and Antarctica. And uh, just I have to finish, I think. Yeah, thank you <laughs> okay. very much indeed. I, 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 I have a question I can 